Hello, my name is uh, Manlut Notong and I'm currently attending the MBA program of the uh, MBS and the National Management Academy. And my very first course is uh, Personal Development for Leadership and Strategic Management. And now I would like to present my uh, very first uh, assignment. Uh, the assignment title is here. Lord Acton, a British historian of the late 19th century, said that power tends to corrupt. Absolute power corrupts absolutely, uh, suggesting that a person's sense of morality lengthens as his or her power increases. Do you agree? Considering this idea, uh, is it ethical for leaders to try to increase their power? Discuss with example. So to discuss about this title, I have uh, spread it into uh, four main contents, introduction, discussion, analysis, and conclusion and references. So in, uh, in uh, contact number two, I have split that into two more uh, topics. So I would like to go to number one, introduction. So I, I would like to start with the command of the log actor. Power tends to corrupt, or absolute power or corrupts absolutely. So this is uh, the command uh, uh, by the Lord Acton on the power. So as we can understand that uh, power, this comment is not a uh, very positive one. It is uh, in a negative sense. And we also know that Lord Acton is very uh, greatest and popular person of the 19th century. So uh, uh, concerning with the power, I would like to uh, point out three more points. Uh, number one, uh, many leaders are also interested about the power. Uh, yes, uh, not only the Acton, uh, but also many other leaders, uh, including us, are also interested about the power. And number two, power could lead to both success and conflict, depending on the etiquette boundaries. Yes, of course, uh, 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 depending on the uh, actor or depending on how we use power, it could lead to both positive and negative consequences. So for number three, power is extension is not as predictable with the leadership. So any leader, every leader needs power. So it, uh, they are not uh, predictable. So this is, uh, as I discussed uh, previously, uh, this is the two main questions that I'm going to discuss. So I would like to go to these two questions. Yes, so uh, discussions and analysis. Yes, so I, I would like to go to the number one questions. Is the morality of a person really weakened if he or she becomes more powerful? So to discuss about the, uh, this question, uh, so I would like to uh, discuss more about the morality. So what is morality? So here I have uh, point out some main uh, points about the morality. Uh, yes, morality is not very simple. It is it possesses a structure of prototype. So it means morality is a prototype, and so it do not it it does not have uh, very definite definitions. And it comes from the Latin moralis, which means customs or manners. So morality mainly focus on manners, and uh, morality also. Uh, can be influenced by both individual and organizational factors. So yes, uh, there are many individual factors like gender, uh, social classes, and also the uh, organizational factors like uh, culture, yeah, organizational culture, and many other things. Uh, organizational history and uh, that kind of things could influence the morality. So for, uh, um, secondly, I would like to go to uh, discuss about the power. What is power? So uh, a combination of the ability to influence and control. So that is power. So here for number two, uh, no power, no work done. So it means to do something, to, to, yeah, to do some kinds of work, we need power to push them forward. And and power is uh, not very separate things. It is a mixture of the individual and organizational components. So individual means, as I uh, discussed previously, and it's gender, it's uh, culture, it's uh, yeah, identity, 
and also organizational components. So uh, many organizational components like the structure, culture, and um, yeah, the environment. So power is a mixture of this, and it could uh, influence on morality as well. So as I uh, discussed uh, previously, morality could be influenced by many things, and power is one of them. So I would like to go to the examples, uh, examples about the relationship between the moral and power. So I have prepared four examples. So for number one example, yeah, it's about uh, Mr. Firstor. So we know that he is the CFO, uh, Chief Financial Officer of the Enron Corporation from 1998 to 2001. And he is also the former senior director in the uh, SAS Securitization Group at uh, Continental Bank. Yeah, and he, he received the BA in economics and the MBA in finance. And also we know that he is one of the most successful people in business. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, yeah, after he gained the power, he became a very successful person. He abused the practice by using SPEs uh, with uh, conflict of interest. It means the other interests, yeah. And after it, is, it was found out, he was sentenced to six years in federal prison in 2004. So this is the very good example of the negative influence of the power on the morality. So, uh, yes, uh, this Mr. Festor, he, uh, his morality is affected negatively by the power that he came. So I would like to go to the example number two. So it's about the wealth of thoughts. So he is also the CEO of the, of the Ascendant Corporation, and he holds the Bachelor of Arts and MBA from Harvard School of Business. And uh, sadly, yeah, she, uh, he strategically inflated the stock prices of the company. And this is the largest fraud case in the 1990s in America, Judicial. And after the case was found out, uh, he was sentenced to 12 years and nine months in jail. This is the second example for how difficult to maintain the power within the ethical boundaries. So yes, this is the analysis stories that the morality is affected negatively by the power. So I would like to go to the example number three. Uh, this is uh, about the Bill Gates. So we all know Bill Gates. So he is a technologist, business leader, and also the philanthropist. And he started the Microsoft with a very small power and he gained a higher power step by step until today. Yeah. And most people accept that he is a transformational leader and one of the greatest leaders. And until now, uh, there is no specific ethical, unethical records. Uh, all his leading methods are very valuable. And so this is not a sad story anymore. So it, this is a very good example of being more powerful, has no negative impact on the morality. So uh, having the uh, power, increasing power, still uh, affect the morality in a positive way. So I would like to go to example number four. Uh, so this is to, yeah, about the Tarana Katin. So he is the CEO of the TE Connectivity Limited. And uh, this is based in Switzerland. And he holds only a bachelor degree in counting. And uh, he started his very first job in uh, 2012. And as um, when he started, he was not a senior staff. He became CEO and now gains the highest power. Now leading a lot of employees in uh, uh, 15, five, uh, yeah, 150 countries. And also after, after, after he became the CEO, the company uh, 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 achieved many awards like the Human Rights Campaign 2017, Best Places to Work for LGBTQ 2018 or also, uh, the company is one of the world's most ethical companies and most admired companies. And until now, uh, he uh, do not uh, he he does not have a specific unethical records. So this is the second story of a uh, good morality with uh, high power. So I have presented two examples 
uh, about the uh, power affected negatively and two examples about power affected uh, positively to the morality. So uh, here I just want to uh, point out two main points. Uh, number one, uh, there is a strong relationship between the morality and power. And yes, and, and this combination could lead to either positive or negative outcomes. And this is true, I have already um, yeah, uh, present uh, uh, with four examples. Uh, so I would like to go to the uh, uh, number two questions. It's trying to expand the range of own power ethically acceptable. So to, under, uh, to discuss about these uh, questions, I would like to discuss about the leader. What is the leader? A leader is someone with uh, commanding authority or influence. Leaders are important not only in business but also in many different areas. And I, I would like to present two examples. Number one, uh, Mohammed uh, Mohandan Gandhi. So we all know him. He led the peaceful protest for civil rights and anti poverty for in in a, India. And for second. Hence, Konsmet uh, Nokteya is, is a uh, descendant conservationist. So and he is also the ambassador of the sustainable use of the natural resources. And now he is doing many researches and leading in sustainable use of natural resources and sustainable environmental practice. So here we can see that uh, good leaders are very important in many different areas for our, our planet. So then what is power? So I have discussed a few previously. Power is necessary and essential to effective leadership. And a leader needs power to lead any kind of work. So here we can, we can, we can see that there are two main sources of power, individual and organizational. Individual sources of power are reached to make power, reward power, cohesive power, uh, expert power and uh, ref, uh, reference power. Organizational sources of power are coping with uncertainty, centrality, dependency, and uh, sustainability. Leaders and power are not spread things. Power can be in any form and leaders have to use them to push things forward for changes. So here we can see, we can see there is a very strong relationship between the leader and the power. So, here, uh, I just want to point out some main points. There might be no one who's satisfied with the current position at all, at all time. Yes, we all want higher positions. And leaders try to expand their power for many different reasons. Expanding, to, expanding the boundaries of power might be unavoidable. And we just have to be checked with ethical lens. So here, uh, I, I just want to point out uh, there is three major moral theories. Consequentialism, sensuology, and virtual ethics. And the, the act of increasing power by the leaders have to be monitored by all these three moral lands. So generally, we can say that if the act of the leaders uh, about increasing power is if it is justifiable uh, with the moral theories, it is acceptable. So this is a uh, conclusion of my presentations. So here's just five main points. In some, power is like a fire, a good servant but a bad master. And I personally agree that a person's uh, awareness of morality becomes weaker as his or her power raises, but it is not absolutely uncontrollable. And power itself is not a negative influencer and the pure act of increasing power is neither ethical nor unethical. So it just depends on the leader and the specific situation and whether it is justifiable with the more scope or not. So yes, uh, this is uh, the end of my presentations and these are my references. Thanks. Thanks a lot and bye.